Okay, let me start with a question. Which Southeast Asian country was the first in the region to launch a communication satellite? Do you know the answer? Would you be surprised to know it was Indonesia? Yes, Indonesia actually made space history in Southeast Asia. Yeah, back in the 1970s, Indonesia became the first country in Southeast Asia to launch a communication satellite. Just think about that for a second, or maybe a minute. Before Malaysia, before Singapore, before Thailand, Indonesia was literally up there in the sky. Pretty impressive for an archipelago with thousands and thousands of islands, right? And honestly, when you think about it, it does actually make total sense. Hi, I'm Kate. And the more I learn about Indonesia, the more amazed and impressed I am by this country. I hope you'll take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe. These two things can help my channel a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. So today, let's take a look at why Indonesia decided to launch Palapa. Yeah, that's the name of that communication satellite they launched back in 1976. And let's look at how it changed everyday life and why it's still something worth bragging about today. But why did Indonesia even need a satellite back then? Well, let's rewind back to the 1970s. Imagine what communication was like in Indonesia, or basically anywhere in the world back then. And the problem in Indonesia was, how do you keep 17,000 islands connected. If you lived in Jakarta, sure, you could pick up a phone and call someone in Surabaya or Bandung. You might have to go to the mm, telecom cell office to do that, but you could do it. But if you wanted to talk to someone in one of the outer islands, good luck. The infrastructure just wasn't there. That's right. The old school telephone lines and radio systems couldn't cover a country this massive and spread out over so many islands. So the government started thinking big. I mean really big, like space big. They realized that a communication satellite could provide signals from Sumatra all the way to Papua thousands of miles away. And finally, Indonesians would be connected in a way that had never been possible before. And here's the part I really love. This wasn't just about technology. It was about uniting the nation. Indonesia was and still is incredibly diverse. So many ethnic groups, cultures, languages. Having a satellite wasn't just about making phone calls easier. It was about saying, we are one country, no matter how far apart our islands are. So that's why the Palapa satellite came into being. Yeah, in 1976, Indonesia launched Palapa A1 the very first communication satellite in Southeast Asia. Indonesians probably already know it, that it was named after their famous Sumpa Palapa Oath by legendary Prime Minister Gajamada from the Majapahit era. He swore to forego worldly comforts until he had unified the whole archipelago. But of course, I didn't know about that until I did the research for this very video. But even I can see that the name Palapa was absolutely perfect. The satellite was literally about uniting Indonesia, not through conquest, but through communication. Now, just to be clear, 
Indonesia didn't build the satellite entirely on its own. The technology came from Hughes Aircraft Company in the US. And the launch itself was carried out by NASA. But the important thing is that the satellite was Indonesia's idea, Indonesia's investment. So was life different before and after Palapa? Absolutely. Palapa made it possible for remote areas that had been basically cut off to receive telephone signals, TV broadcasts, and radio more clearly. It meant that Indonesians could hear the same news at the same time. It meant a family in Kalimantan could call relatives in Jakarta more easily. It meant students in far off provinces could watch educational TV programs that used to be available only in the big cities. For the government, it was huge. It gave them a powerful tool for spreading national messages and programs. But beyond politics, it really did help knit the country together. And guess what? Other countries noticed. Suddenly, Indonesia wasn't just seen as oh, a bunch of islands stretched across the ocean. It was seen as a country that was forward thinking, ambitious, and capable of pulling off major projects. Being first in Southeast Asia didn't just make history in this region. It put Indonesia on the world stage. But let's take a look at the everyday impact. For many of us humans, satellites feel like this uh, distant science fiction thing floating around in space. But the impact of Palapa was very down to earth. Television. This was the beginning of national TV broadcasts. Without Palapa, you wouldn't have had the same kind of synchronized programming across the islands. Imagine Indonesians from Aceh to Papua all watching the same Independence Day celebration live on television for the first time. That's powerful. And phones, it improved long distance calling, which was a big deal at a time when not everyone even had a phone of any kind. Suddenly the idea of calling someone across the country didn't feel so impossible. And what about education? Well, with better communication links, Schools and universities could access educational programming. That meant kids in rural areas weren't as cut off from what kids in the cities were learning. And disaster relief. Yeah, here's something important for a country like Indonesia with so many natural disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, eruptions. Having better communication systems made a huge difference in coordinating emergency responses. So yeah, a satellite in space literally changed daily life on the ground. But let's pause for a second and really think about it. Indonesia wasn't exactly known for space technology in the 1970s. This wasn't a rich country. It was still developing still struggling with poverty and infrastructure. But despite that, the government made the bold move to invest in a satellite and it paid off. Indonesia showed the world that it could take on something ambitious and succeed. And it set the stage for more satellites. After Palapa A1 came Palapa A2 and then even most more satellites in the Palapa series. Even today, Indonesia continues to launch satellites to improve communication, internet coverage, and broadcasting. It's part of a legacy that started in 1976. 
The symbolism of Palapa is what I find so cool about this story. The Palapa satellite wasn't just about technology, remember. It was symbolic. Think about the name again. The Palapa from Gajamata's Oath to Unify the Archipelago. It's like Indonesia was saying, we're picking up where history left off. We're uniting the islands, not with armies, but with technology. And Palapa became a household name, something people associated with progress. Even today, older Indonesians remember the launch as a milestone, the moment Indonesia stepped onto the world stage in a whole new way. But was it all smooth sailing? <laughs> no, of course not. There have been challenges. Satellites are expensive. And Indonesia has had to deal with maintaining and replacing them. Sometimes the inconsistent value of the rupiah has made it harder to afford the technology. And sometimes satellites stopped working earlier than expected. But that's the thing about progress. It's never perfect. The important part is that Indonesia stayed committed. It didn't give up after one or two setbacks. It kept going. Fast forward to today, and Indonesia is still working hard on satellite technology. The government, along with private companies, is investing in satellites for continued internet connectivity throughout the country. Think about how important that is in the digital age. If you live in Jakarta, you might take fast internet for granted, at least most of the time, maybe not always. <laughs> but in some outer islands, internet access is still limited, yeah. But satellites are a way to bridge that gap just like Palapa did for phone and TV signals back in the 1970s. So in this way, the story of Palapa is still ongoing. The goal is the same, uniting the archipelago, connecting people, making sure no one feels left out. So let's wrap it up now. Indonesia's first communication satellite was about vision, pride and unity. It was and still is a country that refused to let geography hold it back. Think about it. Indonesia could have decided that eh, thousands of islands, it's just too hard to connect everybody. But instead, Indonesia said, no, we're going to space. And they did it. In 1976, Indonesia made that history as the first country in Southeast Asia to launch a communication satellite. And the ripple effects are still felt today in the way Indonesians watch TV, make calls, get online, and stay connected across this vast, beautiful country. Palapa A1 wasn't just technology. It was a promise to connect 17,000 islands, and it was a symbol of unity and progress. And now many Palapa satellites are up in space, but their impact has been right here on Earth. And that's why it's such an incredible part of Indonesia's story. So if you enjoyed my video about Palapa, please give it a like, share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. And remember, Indonesia's reach goes all the way to space. Yep. Bye for now. See you next time.